When you hear ancient Egypt, you probably start thinking of mummies, pyramids, and endless deserts. But did you know that many of the things we use today were invented by the ancient Egyptians? Eyeshadow, leaves, peppermint candy, bowling, shaving and trimming, door locks, toothpaste, tables and other furniture, police, and so on. However, it seems that before that, the ancestors of these inventors had gone much further, so far that the knowledge of their inventions has been lost, and today even the greatest minds in the world cannot explain what we have discovered. In this video, we will not be looking for the answer to how the Egyptians invented all of the things just listed, but whether they knew anything more. Did they have thousands of years ago, what we only discovered decades ago? Did the ancient Egyptians know how to fly? In order to escape from Crete and King Minos, the ingenious craftsman Daedalus made wings for himself and his son out of feathers glued with wax. Icarus's father warned him not to fly too low or too high, lest the moisture of the sea blind his wings or the sun melt them. Icarus disregarded his father's advice not to fly close to the sun, and it melted the wax in his wings, and he fell into the sea and died. This part of the sea was named the Icarian Sea in his honor. Yes, these two had nothing to do with the Egyptians, but the myth of them was meant to serve as a warning to mankind not to compare themselves with the gods and defy their will. As we all well know today, that didn't work. In 1903, exploration of the celestial realm began for us thanks to the Wright brothers and their gasoline-powered twin-propeller glider. In many mythologies of the distant past, however, we find references to aircraft or devices that could somehow have allowed our ancestors to fly. But these are only legends, or not. An artifact discovered in 1898 during excavations of the tomb of Padi Emen in Saqqara, Egypt, casts doubt on the matter. It is dated to approximately 200 BC and was originally called the Bird of Saqqara. On display in room 22 of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, inventory number 6347 is one of the most controversial archaeological finds. With a length of about 5.51 inches and a wingspan of 7.09 inches, what at first glance resembles a bird is an object that weighs no more than 141 Oz. It is made of the sycamore tree, considered sacred and a symbol of immortality. It is also associated with the goddess Hathor. At first it was assumed that the find was a ritual object, a toy of a child from a wealthy family, or a weather indicator placed on sacred boats to indicate the direction of the wind. The latter hypothesis finds some support in some New Kingdom reliefs found in the Honsu Temple. The first to reason differently, however, was Khalil Messiha, a professor at the University of Helwan. To begin with, he refutes the hypothesis that it is a funerary artifact, although he agrees with the fact that the ancient Egyptians often placed miniatures of their technology in their tombs. Messiha explains that the Saqqara bird differs significantly from other statues and models of birds found in excavations. However, he goes even further by recognizing in the unusual bird a model of a small glider. What struck him was that, apart from the beak and eyes, which point others to the depiction of a hawk, the emblem of the god Horus, the tail is actually square and oddly upright, with a concave section that could house something like a propeller, which is probably missing. The wings are spread, but without the slightest curve, they taper towards the ends and are laid in a groove. The absence of legs only further strengthens Professor Messiha's theory. His conclusion is that the artifact could have functioned as a glider if it had had a horizontal stabilizer, which, as he suggests, has been lost. According to Messiha's theory, the fact that the figure has no legs and the angle of its wings is similar to that of a modern airplane suggests an attempt to achieve aerodynamic lift. After the professor's courage to describe all this and put his name to it, Many people began to call the artifact wrongly. The Saqqara glider or the Pharaoh's plane. Or maybe that's exactly what it's properly called? 
Biologist Ivan Sanderson conducts a simulation. He creates a model, an exact replica of the artifact, but uses balsa wood instead of sycamore. He adds the missing piece at the back of the pharaoh's plane, which serves for control, stability, and balance. This piece at the end of the tail is key to turning, taking off, rising, and lowering the aircraft. Once ready, he proved that just a slight push could make the layout fly. Unfortunately, however, there is no way to say definitively that this was an ancient prototype aircraft. Furthermore, no ancient Egyptian aircraft have been found, nor is there any other evidence to suggest their existence. Some suggest that the Saqqara bird may represent evidence that knowledge of the principles of aviation existed many centuries before it was thought to have been first discovered. One thing is certain. This is another discovery whose function, though thousands of years ahead in time, we do not fully understand. And what follows, we don't understand it at all. The Jed Pillar and the Dendera Light. In this part of the video, it's your turn to get involved. Let's travel back a few thousand years to Egypt for a moment and reflect together. As we know, the ancient Egyptians did not know electricity at the time of the pyramids. How then do you explain the absence of any traces of soot on the inner walls of tombs and pyramids? If, as serious Egyptologists claim, the painters used fire torches and oil lamps to paint the walls inside the chambers, then obviously there must have been traces of soot left behind, at least a tiny bit. However, such traces do not exist anywhere, not even in the most secluded halls. In your opinion, how would it then be possible to continue building from the inside without light? But the more important question is, how would it have been possible to produce the magnificent frescoes on the walls? There is a hypothesis that tries to explain this mystery by saying that mirrors were used. However, this hypothesis is extremely untenable for the simple reason that the official position of scholars of the time was that mirrors were actually made of silver. But a silver mirror reflects less than half the light that falls on it. Imagine the transmission of light down the pyramid's intricate and long corridors. After the third mirror, you'll barely be able to see where you're stepping anymore, let alone paint and craft precise bas-reliefs on the monolithic rock. All of which brings us to the inexplicable to science, Jet's pillar and Dendera's lamps. The possibility that the ancient Egyptians knew electricity is attested to by St. Augustine in the late 4th century AD. In one of his writings, he describes an amazing lamp in the Temple of Isis that neither wind nor water could extinguish. Another ancient philosopher, Plutarch, also mentions a lamp that burned at the entrance to the temple of the god Amun-Ra. The priests claimed that it had not been extinguished for several centuries. A similar interpretation has been given to the unusual bas-relief found on one of the walls in the temple of the goddess Hathor in the city of Dendera. In his book, Lost Technologies, Norwegian engineer Henry Kelsen commented that in the hands of the Egyptians was shown an incandescent lamp with an electrical cord, connecting this device to something similar to a junction box. The leading specialist in the field of electrical engineering, V. Harn, expresses the opinion that the so-called jed poles, which hold the transparent bulbs, that is, the bulbs, very much resemble modern high-voltage insulators. However, let us begin our analysis with the Ka character before moving on to Jed's pillar. In ancient Egyptian religion, the Ka represents the spirit of man personified with divine power of the highest order and is closely related to his physical form. After a person's death, the Ka lives on in his tomb. It is depicted with its hands raised upwards. It is important to note that ancient Egyptian inscriptions are meaning-based. In analyzing the bas reliefs, especially those with Jed, we notice that in one picture, Ka is supporting a snake with Jed's top, and in the other, a flask with his middle. Rejecting the mysticism, we can interpret this in more practical terms. 
Thus, the following picture emerges. The energy from the top of the Jedi maintains the discharge, while the energy from the middle drives the bulb of the lamp, analogous to the modern division of anode and cathode. In terms of megalithic energy theory, the Jed functions as a power source. According to this idea, it is a device that takes power from a megalithic generator. This energy comes from the resonant vibrations of the chemical bonds between the silicon and oxygen atoms in the substance's crystals. These bonds, which are a major component in the structure of many minerals, such as quartz, allow the conversion of mechanical energy into electricity. Jedium converts this energy into a stream of electrons that can be used for useful work, such as making a lamp glow. Probably the most controversial element in the whole story for you, too, is the image of the light bulb. Well, rest assured, even Egyptologists themselves don't know how to interpret it, so don't expect us to explain it to you either. Science today refuses to acknowledge the existence of the knowledge embedded in the megaliths. Science in ancient times was interrelated with religion. The priests who served the sacred cults were proficient in mathematics, astronomy, anatomy, new writing, and many other sciences. The initiates preserved the knowledge, carefully passing on its meaning to their successors. But along with the destruction of the existing organization of society, the religious foundations were also being destroyed. The cults changed, and with them the symbols that held the great ancient secrets. Thus they lost their original meaning, were replaced by new sacred content, and finally simply disappeared. If these unexplained artifacts have confused you, you should know that they are nothing compared to the new discoveries in Egypt that have shocked scientists. Click the video on the screen now and we'll be together again in a second.